I'm Stephen Brennan, you're watching Israeli News Live. Today, this evening, keeping things in perspective. Uh, of course, the U.S. is about to begin their drills tomorrow on Monday, the 16th of October, today being October 15th, uh, with the South Korea. They're about to begin the, the massive drills there on North Korea's border. And supposedly this is to kind of, uh, well, send a message to North Korea that we mean business. Uh, and that if you don't disarm from your nuclear weapons, then we're going to attack you. That's kind of the way it uh, seems to be as far as these war games. And the reason why I'm doing this broadcast right now is not to say that Kim Jong-un is some wonderful saint by no stretch of the imagination there. He does have nuclear weapons, but so does the United States and many other nations around the world. But, uh, but it's this ideology that uh, according to the Trump administration, the more war games we do on his border, the more likely he is to cave in and give in to our demands. Uh, and that he shouldn't have any type of retaliatory response whatsoever, uh, whether it be testing his ICBMs or detonating another nuclear device underground. Uh, he should just simply cave in to the American demands. Now, Again, granted, I realize that Kim Jong-un is a dictator of his people. He's basically God. He's the uh, equivalency of Pharaoh of Egypt to the North Korean people, which is very tragic in itself. And he does have a, a sizable arson there of nuclear weapons that he could pretty much launch on any of his neighbors nearby that could wreak havoc and bring about mayhem and an unbelievable uh, number, amount of loss of life there. Well, so can the United States if they choose to do a preemptive strike. So it's either, it's neither, there's no win-win in the situation with North Korea. Kim Jong-un launches his own preemptive strike, millions will die. If the United States does a preemptive strike, millions will die. Either way, it's death to a lot of people and innocent people, no doubt at that. Uh, so as we look at this and see that the U.S. is getting ready to do the drills there, which could spark a conflict without a doubt there, uh, I could not help but think about looking at this more uh, in a, <laughs> how would you put it, more in a uh, neutral look here. So as we look at this, North Korea is also preparing to launch another ballistic missile in retaliation over U.S. naval drills. And this kind of reminds me of the pot calling the kettle black there. The U.S. gets really angry at North Korea when they do a, a, a provocation such as this, uh, launching a missile there, only saying that we must take this guy out. He's really bad news. But, you know, we don't really think about this in, a, in, um, in an equal term, such as, for example, when Russia uh, did the Zapad exercises uh, uh, with Belarus, in, uh, on their border there with Europe there. And this was back in September, and no, Russia did not attack Europe as so many NATO commanders were fearing that Russia was staging this exercise to be able to invade Europe, to be able to take out Latvia, uh, Estonia, and Lithuania, and all these nations around here, or either Ukraine. All the, the uh, excitement that was being projected about why Russia was doing the Zapad exercises uh, that it was actually just a cover for being able to invade Europe never materialized into reality. Just a lie. Just a, a propaganda being fed to our Western, uh, to the by the Western media to uh, Americans and Europeans to make them more fearful of Russia in the first place. Uh, but here's the weird thing. Now Russia does this just like the United States with South Korea is launching massive drills on the border with North Korea. And North Korea is just supposed to sit back and be all happy about it and not, not worry about it at all. It's no big deal. It's just America. They're not going to bomb us after all. Why we should we be afraid? So, you know, Kim Jong-un decides that he's going to retaliate and, uh, you know, fire off a few more ballistic missiles to show that he has the capability of sending a nuclear weapons towards the mainland United States, Japan, uh, Guam, or any other neighbors around that so kind of irritate him, such as Australia. And uh, granted, I do get the idea the man is a nut, right? Well, Russia's being treated pretty much the same way because they had drill near, dared to have a drill near uh, NATO's border uh, as far as Euro the European Union, that is. So the United States is retaliating as well. According to Sputnik News, NATO builds up the presence in Poland despite the lack of a real threat from Russia. 
The recent deployment of U.S. troops in Poland is a part of a wider NATO military activities near Russia's border, but these moves cannot be justified by non-existent security threats, experts have told Sputnik. On Thursday, Russian Defense Ministry spokesman Major General Igor Konashkinov uh, said that Washington used the Western hysteria around the joint Russian-Belarusian uh, Zapad's 2017 drills and quietly deployed its, uh, the second armored brigade combat team in Poland, along with its own equipment, while the military equipment of the U.S. 3rd Armored Brigade combat team has not been removed, thus deploying a de facto mechanized division near the Russian border and violating the NATO-Russian Founding Act. All right, so we're doing the same thing to North Korea, uh, and North Korea is responding in kind as Russia did their drills on European borders, and of course, the United States or NATO is responding to Russia's exercises. But then again, Russia does the exercises, the pod exercise. It is a exercise that goes on ever so often. It's nothing new. Uh, and yet at the same token, NATO has been doing massive amount of drills on Russia's borders. I think Russia did a little bit larger drill this year in retaliation for what NATO has been doing. You know, but for the longest time, NATO did not go on the borders of Russia and do all these massive drills. It wasn't until the whole issue came down with Ukraine when the CIA got involved and uh, caused a Maidan coup toppling the legitimate government, uh, former President uh, uh, Yakanovich, he was toppled. Russia had to rescue the man. Uh, while instead of the United States coming to the aid of Russia to rescue the president uh, Yakanovich, we decided to back a whole new president altogether because it fit more of our uh, capitalistic ideology for Ukraine and to take Ukraine away from the people instead, turn the people upon each other and, you know, pretty much set up a, uh, what would you call it, a neo-Nazi government there to persecute uh, the Ukrainian people. Very sad situation. But I just keep looking at this, and, I, and I, I'm trying to figure out how are we supposed expect to expect to resolve anything or to have any kind of diplomatic uh, solution to the crisis with North Korea if we continue to do the same thing that is being done on the border of Russia and Europe, with Russia having their exercises, NATO having their exercises, and it's tit for tat. And now Russia is talking about moving more missiles to Kaliningrad. Kaliningrad. My gosh, what do you expect is going to happen out of that? Well, that's just going to cause more fears, and sure, sure enough, before long, it's going to end up in an all-out war between Russia and NATO. I mean, we can't expect much to change. Whatever we see happen with North Korea in the coming weeks here is what we can expect to happen in Europe along the border with Russia if the same types of scenarios continue to be played out. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, Russia targets NATO soldiers' smartphones, Western officials are saying. Uh, you know, why? Well, you know, Russia's trying to find out what the enemy is up to. And they have to consider NATO to be an enemy because, after all, of course, they blame Russia for the fall of Ukraine and, and the taking of Crimea, but I would have to say that Russia rescued the Crimean people uh, from a, from a uh, neo-Nazi thug government that was toppled by the CIA to start with. That's another story altogether. But anyway, so now Russia is targeting NATO soldier smartphones. You know, there is some uh, truth of not having a smartphone. Probably a whole lot better just to have the old rotary dial-ups or something like that and ditch smartphones altogether. Russia has opened a new battlefront with NATO, according to the Western military officials, by exploiting a point of vulnerability for almost all Allied soldiers, their personal smartphones. Yeah, I can believe that to be so. Doesn't mean that Russia is the best guy on the block either. You know, they're going to try to get information as much as they possibly can. Now, Russia is not willing to comment about this story, but I do find it interesting. Uh, also, lawmakers, Russia developing weapons capable of respond, responding to increased U.S. threat. Uh, well, I guess just by the looks of the photograph that they use in the background here kind of sums it up all. You know, it reminds me of what it was like before the flood, before the Andalusian destruction. We find out that, uh, well, they were teaching, the fallen angels were teaching the art of war uh, when it was at one point in time, well, kind of quiet and not so bad, and life was going pretty good there, but once the fallen angels came down and slept with women and had children and produced the Nephilim, the giants in the land, and 
uh, just ended up being dog eat dog, so so to speak, type of world. And uh, we ended up having the arts of war taught and everything else until they basically, other than the Andalusian destruction, the flood itself, nearly annihilated themselves. Looks like we have the same thing happening all over again. And of course, Russia, no different than the United States, making massive amounts of weapons to be able to engage in war. And you just can't help but wonder, when is this ever going to end? One other bit of news I wanted to share with you I thought was very interesting here. And this was uh, uh, one, of, one of the commenting people in this article. is David uh, Gartenstein Ross. Uh, he is a journalist that brought out a very interesting thing regarding Trump's administration accused of aiding Iranian militias in Syria. Uh, this was brought out on voanews.com. I think it's worth looking into this article here because of the fact that right now that President Trump is calling on uh, leaving the, the, the negotiated deal that was done under the Barack Obama administration with Iran, leaving this, uh, this nuclear deal, uh, canceling it altogether and reconsidering how to deal with Iran. Well, I think it's kind of interesting as well because I know that there's some truth to this article here. This article here is stating that the U.S. military has been aiding the Iranian militia inside of Syria on the southern side of Deir Azor. We know the U.S. has been working for the Kurds to help uh, defeat ISIS on the northern side. But at the same time, we know that the U.S. has been aiding ISIS. So why would they help the Iranians in the first place? Well, my thought is, is that uh, they're trying to sh uh, save face in the light of the fact that Russia has been accusing the United States of aiding and abetting the ISIS militants uh, and have been giving the ISIS militants uh, secret information, aerial photos and this stuff in order to be able to pinpoint and target the Syrian Arab army, uh, that this may be something that the U.S. is now doing to kind of make it look like that, yes, they are there to help uh, in fighting ISIS. So it's kind of to save face. Uh, this is one reason why I think that this article has came out there. Uh, but it is true, though. The U.S. military has also worked with the, with the Iranian military guard inside of Iraq when it came to Mosul. So they have cooperated before. But now we're dealing with this deal, uh, the, the nuclear deal that was done under the Obama administration and President Trump is wanting to cancel this deal altogether. And of course, the reasoning behind this is that we don't have another North Korea. Well, my concern is, is by canceling the deal that's been done, which to me was a bad deal to start with because it was much like what Bush and uh, Clinton did under North Korean deal years ago, helping to build these nuclear facilities, which is nothing but like giving the bullets to the gun to start with. Uh, same thing with Iran, it's no different. If you wanna help them in, in doing technology uh, for getting power to their people, why not solar panels or windmills? Does it always have to be nuclear facility? Try something like that in your diplomatic efforts instead uh, of continuing to do things that will do nothing but cause disaster and destruction for the future of mankind. Uh, but anyway, it is kind of interesting to see that on one side, the U.S. is working with Iran, and on the other side, we're trying to topple the nation. I think Iran sees that as well. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Let's do hope that Iran does not get nuclear weapons. Of course, there have been some suggestion from a former scientist of Iran who had defected to the United States that did say they already had I think some three or four atomic bombs, I forget exactly the number on that, uh, but very troubling situation indeed all over the world. Where will be the flashpoint? Well, we discussed that earlier today on Hebrew Nation Radio. You might want to check that out sometime. Hebrew Nation Radio, I don't know if it's online.com. Check that out. We air every Sunday and Wednesday nights there, uh, but also we'll be loading that on Yana's channel, Rise Up Children of God. So be sure to subscribe to Yana's channel. You'll start getting the Hebrew Nation radio broadcast there posted coming this week. We're going to start posting those there. And as well, don't forget the Noon Institute of Biblical Research. We are airing more teaching videos there that I'm sure those of you that enjoy them, you can get those there. Those, many of them are not gonna be shown here on Israeli News Live, only if I feel like it's a 